So I hope you're well and I hope you have had a really good start for February. Now, February is actually a really good month to get started on new things because in the Northern Hemisphere, the light is gaining more power, the sun is getting more power, the daytime hours are increasing slowly, but definitely. And um, it's starting to feel like a bit more energy is in the air. Now, tomorrow is also the new moon, the new moon in Aquarius. Um, so I thought I would jump on and talk a tiny bit about how we can harness the moon cycles um, for our own happiness as well. Hi Claire, how oh, great you're joining from your desk. Um, okay, so um, I have prepared some words for you, so I'm going to have a look at them now just to make sure that I don't leave too much out. Um, so why should we care about the moon? Well, to be honest, the moon uh, affects all of us. You know, it affects our oceans. It uh, it affects uh, nature and we are nature. We are not just walking on top of the earth. We are part of nature too. So, of course, it, uh, it impacts us. And uh, a lot of people feel the impact of the full moon. And I know that uh, it's, you know, I, I hear people complaining that they can't sleep. Uh, some people sleep really great. Other people have got trouble sleeping. Um, and uh, I remember like like someone, I think, uh, mentioned to me she worked in a hospital and new, uh, full moons, they would always have an increase of people. Like they would always be a higher demand on their services. So there's definitely something about the full moon but about the moon in general. And if you consider it, the moon has got the power to pull, you know, the oceans. It can control the oceans. It controls the tides. The, the tides um, respond to, to the pull of the moon. And if we humans are 70% water, then it's only natural that we also are impacted by the moon. Um, now, you know, for, for thousands of years, uh, women would meet, you know, beneath the new moon uh, as well as the new moon to, to celebrate various rituals uh, and also to celebrate uh, Mother Nature and their connection to Mother Nature. And today we live in a culture where many have lost complete touch with nature um, and also with communities around them. And I think that is that's a real loss. It's a real tragedy um, because although it is lovely that we have all the mod cons, you know, we've got central heating, we've got electricity in our houses, we've got um, street lights, you know, so that we can go out and about even after dark safely. It also means that, you know, we are a bit further removed from um, nature. And sometimes we have to make a bit more of an effort to connect with nature and to, to gain the most of that connection uh, because there is so much to be gained in that, not only when it comes to grounding ourselves, but also um, to kind of give ourselves that space of time for reflection. So, um, the Earth, uh, or sorry, I should say the, the moon cycle has got um, several phases. It's, it's got like eight recognized phases, but in today's talk, I will just touch on two of them. Um, and the new moon, as I said, is tomorrow. It's in the 9th of February and it will be in Aquarius. So Aquarius is all about new beginnings and about uh, the, the greatest good of all. So hence me taking this opportunity to, to talk about how you can utilize um, the, both the new moon and the full moon cycles. So the new moon is really, I need to put my tea down because I thought I'm warming my hands on it, but it's not cold. Um, so the new moon is really the phase where things start over. It's like, um, I, I always think the new moon a bit like, you know, the, the, the depth of the soil. The new moon is when the moon is dark um, and it's not very spectacular. And sometimes people forget that there is a new moon because you can't really tell. Now, the new moon is exactly that. It's all about new beginnings. The new moon 
is a really good time to start thinking about what seeds you would like to sow, you know, maybe in your subconscious, in your own life. Um, and actually, if you are a gardener, you know, some people say that this time is also where the, the earth is the most fertile. So, you know, planting season is coming. Um, so this is a time to really allow yourself to go inside and reflect. Now it's dark like the soil. So this is the perfect time to kind of plant those initial seeds and those thoughts and also to gain some clarity. And then the, the full moon is roughly two weeks in the future. Uh, it's like 15 days, sometimes it's 13 and a half days. Um, so it, it kind of gives you um, like a, a roughly a two week cycle to kind of work towards. But it doesn't mean that you have to restrict yourself to only looking at things that are achievable in, in a window of two weeks. Why, why do that? But it's kind of a way of making it, um, how shall I say, mark it in your diary because you're working in tune with Mother Nature to do something to, to, to improve your life, to create more joy, whether it is because you want to start something new that brings you joy or whether you just want to review the things that you're doing already and then work towards improving those because we are always growing, we are always expanding and developing. So the, this, especially this new moon, um, might feel uh, like there is like a surge of energy. And obviously it is spring, so there is a bit of a surge of energy anyway. But uh, because this is in Aquarius, uh, you might feel it. Now, I am not an astrologer, but I use a lot of astrology in my work. And uh, I, I love how it's always really, really accurate. Um, but again, we are all different and we all feel this differently. So there's nothing really right or wrong if you can't feel it. But if it's the new moon in Aquarius, then there's only one thing that you really need to know about Aquarius. And it is that the Aquarius will really ask us to look at how we can help um, people around us with our own unique talents and gifts. And whether that's your closest family, you know, or whether it's greater society that you're looking at, this could be a really good time for you to just do a bit of reflection on how you can, in other, in other words than using the cliche, shine your own light uh, really, really bright. So, um, because it's a reflective time, this is all about becoming clear uh, on what ideas or intention you want to kind of plant in your own subconscious then you know journaling is really great and some people get scared when I mention this but journaling can be literally sitting down with a piece of paper for five minutes and jotting a couple of things down or you can set aside a lot longer but um, I encourage you to use especially maybe today and tomorrow to kind of just think about how you show up in the world and how you use your abilities to help the people around you. And hopefully, especially this, uh, this new moon, there will be an energy to hopefully want you to, to utilize that a bit more and not worry so much about staying put and being scared to put yourself out there. Um, another thing to maybe think about is to make a list of all the things that you would like to review in your life or that you would like to improve in your life. So it could be thinking about, you know, maybe those dreams and desires that you have, focus on how you really want to feel. So obviously, you know, it's, if you're desirous to have a sports car, then that's great. But it's not so much really that you want you you want to have a sports car is probably more because you want to feel I don't know free and rebellious I don't know maybe rebellious is not the right word whatever you associate the sports car to do uh, so you can write down some of these things and you can make a pledge to yourself as well that these are the things that you intend to focus on you know for the coming future whether that is that you're going to take active steps within the next two weeks or whether you're going to open it up a bit more and just keep it at the forefront of your mind. Now, the full moon 
is, as I said, roughly two weeks ahead of the, the new moon. And uh, that means that the next full moon is going to be on the 24th of February. And the full moon is all about letting go. Um, there's many different ways that we can let go, but if we think about having worked really intensively, you know, on our dreams and our intentions, then because we keep growing and expanding, a couple of weeks from now, you're going to look back and go like, oh, but, you know, I've, I've outgrown this or maybe this is no longer what really serves me. So the full moon is a key time to release those things that no longer serves you. And that maybe feel restrictive in some way or the other. Now, it's a great time to actually release clutter in your home. Uh, it's a great time to release mental clutter. So again, it could be uh, allowing yourself for uh, a longer journaling session or maybe a meditation class or session. Um, maybe you want to feng shui your entire home uh, or just even parts of it, you know. So especially if you are focusing your intention or you've been working on something, that part of your home that is linked to that the most could be a really good place to look at to see whether you can release things from there, uh, move things around uh, so that it supports you better and also supports the new you a bit better because we have to remember that we keep growing and evolving. Um, and actually, traditionally, there, there used to be uh, you know, our ancestors, they used to take often, you know, like they would normally do the big spring cleans and things like that. They would take all the furniture outside uh, and either bathe it in moonlight or in, in, in bright sunshine, what was available, um, and uh, then clean the whole house before bringing it back in again and rearranging the furniture. And something magical happens when, when you do this because it changes the way that a, you look at things and you look at your home and it really just kind of ups the energy, you know, and makes you also think slightly differently. So it can be a really supportive way to, to you know, bring new change and new ways of, of thinking into your life as well. And the, the new moon, sorry, the new moon, the full moon is obviously a lot more spectacular uh, to most people than the new moon. That is, unless it's overcast and you can't see it. But that is, I think, when a lot of people really feel this stronger connection to nature. You know, if you look up and you look at this big sparkling ball of light in the night sky, um, it is amazing to to remember that even if you've got family members who are halfway around the world, or maybe on the completely opposite side of the world, you know, um, within that day, they are likely to see that same moon that you are looking at, um, even if not exactly at the same time, because the Earth has to turn. But that moon gives us uh, an anchoring point, and um, the moon has always been uh, connected with the subconscious and it has always been connected maybe with a slight woo you know like the 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 witches would uh, would celebrate you know during full moon and things like that um but the the full moon is also a beautiful celebration of nature because it really illuminates and it gives us not only in outside the opportunity to see things in a different light uh, but also kind of internally so we can allow ourselves to have that time to reflect on a how long we've come you know since the last time we worked with the moon um, and it can also be that we just allow ourselves to look maybe at that those subconscious thoughts and beliefs that might be holding us back so working both with the new moon and the full moon can be really, really powerful um, if you put your mind to it. And as I said, a lot of people prefer to work with the full moon more than the new moon. And there's nothing right or wrong. I always say believe, you know, use what you believe in the most and what you feel called to the most. Um, and then, you know, you can you can adapt this to suit you. 
I know people that uh, will will kind of moon bathe or they'll put their crystals out or like I said, put their literally put their furniture out um, in in the moonlight, you know, to just change things up and utilize that energy. And maybe it is that increased energy from the moon that means that some people can't sleep and that there are more emis- um, submissions at submissions admissions um, to um, to A and E and hospitals. Who knows? Um, but I do know that it is a really really powerful um, a time of the month to kind of be be looking at things. Only though, if you allow yourself to also look for the moon and. I know, like I said, you know, we've got a lot of gadgets these days that can tell us these things. Uh, I think one of the favorite things in, in my parents' home at the moment is a digital clock that that shows the, the moon cycles. Um, and it shows all eight um, which are phases of the moon. And I love that <laughs> because sometimes, especially if you live in a, in a city with street lights or if you live in the UK and it's always great and overcast, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, then, you know, it can be hard to keep track of. But as I said, if you know that it's coming to that full moon, you are more likely to look and then you'll also see it. And always, it always brings me like, it's like joy in my heart when I see that big moon in the sky. Um, I also think it helps us to kind of take us out of this little bubble that we can very often live in, you know, like we can live in our own little heads in, in our own little space fear it can sometimes be a bit restricted but if we can come out and kind of see the bigger picture a bit more and you know like just looking at the moon brings you I think out of your head and your little bubble a bit because it reminds you that we are all on this planet together we are all impacted by this moon that has the power to pull on the oceans Um, and although we are still us down here. There is something really, really beautiful and poetic, I believe, about that moon. And whether you use it for like hookah purposes, I mean, my family and I have sometimes had like bonfires during full moon, you know, drinking hot chocolate outside um, and marveling at the moon. Uh, and, you know, it, that is beautiful. Or maybe you just take like a couple of minutes you know by the window to look out and admire it whatever suits you will work now i have already alluded to this um and if you haven't already seen it i have posted another event that will actually take place one day after the full moon and that is my new moon circle that i am starting at the next full moon and Uh, I can't do the 24th, so I'm doing it on the 25th instead, which is a Sunday. And I am uh, hosting it at 5 p.m. UK time. And if you would like to join, then uh, please uh, register yourself for it. Um, The link is uh, there. And I will I will put it down underneath here as well, by the way. It should, it should pop up with the video. Um, and what can you expect from a moon's circle? Well, my aim for kind of setting up this, which is a completely new community, is to have um, something that brings people together once a month to just create that space to allow us to have that reflection to allow ourselves to center ourselves and our thoughts and to think about our dreams and aspirations and set some powerful intentions too. Um, It'll only be 60 minutes long, so it won't be a really, really long session because everyone's got busy lives. Um, But I will be talking about the astrology around that particular moon, uh, moon. And uh, I will also talk about um, how we can utilize that best possible, talking about the energies, how we can navigate the energies, and I will lead a a meditation as well. And I encourage everyone to bring their favorite uh, notebook and pen along so that you can make some notes uh, and use that space and time 
for self-care, uh, self-development, and hopefully also making some tangible steps towards your dreams and desires. Um, if you've got any questions about the Moon Circle, then uh, let me know. But otherwise, I said, I will just hope that I can see you there. It's going to be on Zoom, so it's going to be uh, off social media platforms because I, I want it to be a really, um, how shall I say, interactive, but also like a closed uh, community. And so there'll be opportunity to ask questions and um, it'll be interactive. And if you would like to come along but can't make it, then there will be a, a recording that will be available for a limited amount of time as well. But I haven't set up all the details around that. So if you can't come, then uh, please let me know. Uh, and then I will have to find a way to send you the recording afterwards. But for now, for today, because like I said, the new moon is just around the corner, I invite you to think about how you are sharing your gifts and talents with the world, whether that's the people in your immediate surroundings, whether that's your colleagues, your friends and family, whether that is the world as a whole. And then think about how you can Get yourself out there more and do more of the good stuff that you know you are doing and that brings you joy when you do it. And uh, maybe also think about how we can make a bit more space and time for some happiness and hygge, whether that is during your working day, your uh, private life or just the whole week in a just, as general. <laughs> okay, I hope to see you at my moon circle. and. Um, if not, then I hope that this video has given you some ideas and inspiration as to how you can work with the moon. Have a lovely, lovely week ahead. Bye.